Okay, so this is going to be the really awkward ICP project. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna just ease into this. History and development. It was first discovered by William Smith. He used a drill, but it wasn't contracted. Like, he didn't have a contract to start drilling. But drilling was first contracted in 1933 in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they drill for crude oil. Crude oil is then like transformed into diesel and gasoline and like other products such as like kerosene and stuff. It's It was first used, like the oil they dug for or drilled for, was first used for medicine in Greece. And the grease was used for their wagons and the medicine was obviously used by doctors to pre prescribe and help patients with their needs. Um, Production of oil first became like a major thing during the Industrial Revolution while like while everything was being produced and when industry started to boom uh, they realized that oil was pretty much liquid gold and would help the world forever. So technology. So for technology Obviously, there's many various things that gasoline and diesel can both be used in. But to start off, you can start off with the definition of diesel, because not a lot of people really know what that is. They just know that it costs more than gas when they go to the gas station. Well, diesel is actually any fraction of gas mixed with something else to combust a diesel engine. So a diesel engine is a completely different build, and usually what it is is it's mostly petroleum that interferes with that fraction. So you have gas mixed with usually a specific fraction of petroleum and maybe a few other things and that will combust the diesel engine which usually you see those used in bigger vehicles stuff with like a lot more power and such and but with gasoline gasoline is used in a lot of things such as power generators and you all know what that is we learned that in the last chapter so it's like gas can be used in a lot of that to produce electricity in the generator, it gets mechanical energy to electrical energy, and electricity stuff. And another thing would be house appliances such as water furnaces and furnaces and stuff. Gas is used to fuel a lot of that. And another thing would just be vehicles. So obviously, so like, that's a vehicle. In case you didn't know. So, basic, basically, basically, gas is used in vehicles, mainly obviously in the engine to combust it and put a lot of energy into mechanical energy and get the motors running, the engine and such. But there's a lot more in depth with an engine that just, than just the fact that the gas goes through and the engine starts working. There's a lot more in-depth things to that. So, but gas is the main fuel and diesel can also be the main fuel depending on what you want to get for your vehicle and what your vehicle is meant to have usually. But an example of a technology like that and how engines do work, we'll just go on a slightly more basic level. I mean, it's still pretty complicated, but it would be more basic than going completely in depth with a vehicle like that would be an example of a four stroke engine which we already learned about that and a good example would also be here this diagram sorry if you can't see it and if you do good job so there's four steps to a four stroke engine and that would be intake compression power and exhaust and how that works is the first step the air fuel will go into the piston that's obviously it's intaking it obviously and that's its first revolution when it says four strokes each stroke is one rotation of the piston so these pistons in the engine with the piston the air fuel goes in and it starts to rotate that's the first rotation the second rotation it will start to compress that air fuel that it was intaking and the third step it will receive a spark and that will start to have the power and that brings 
the entire equation which we haven't even learned about which would be force equals pressure times area surface yeah area and then the next step would be exhaust now obviously converts all that into power and you get that final rotation as it starts to go through the exhaust and bring a lot more power to the engine so intake compression power exhaust it all goes through those steps and basically there's also a two-stroke engine and the difference between a two-stroke and a four-stroke is actually there's a lot more complicated things to it but to put it on the most basic level pretty much a two-stroke completes this in two strokes of the piston so pretty much the first stroke of the piston would be intake and compression it does those both simultaneously and then the next step is power and exhaust and it does those both simultaneously with one rotation of the piston so a two-stroke engine would be working a lot faster because it's completing both of these rotations at the same time two rotations is completing intake and compression all that simultaneously so it's gonna have to run a lot faster and one example of that would be of a dirt bike which obviously dirt bikes can be four stroke and two stroke this one would be a two stroke other differences that are more complicated would be stuff such as the fact that two strokes don't have valves which will make things a lot more simplistic to put together but basically in the end it's a lot more complicated and I was going to start the bike and go in depth about how with it completing it in two rotations of the piston and everything the difference in noise because obviously the stereotypical like noise of a motor would be like a deep loud noise and a two stroke actually sounds different but obviously it sucks outside so and yeah there's no room in here so I can't really take off the bike and take it out there and start it because it's all rainy and crap so yeah hey Russell hey. so let's talk availability it's it's pretty available okay like it's pretty available but we're slowly running out that's the thing that we're worried about but we'll get into that later. Um, production is, is really high of oil, but the price is very, very, it fluctuates greatly. Uh, we actually have oil in the US, but we don't drill for it here. We go to foreign countries and ship it back. That's how we get our, our most of our oil. Um, it's, we obviously get it from the ground. Ahoy. And but that's another problem. It's a non-renewable resource, so we can't get any more. Yeah. That's right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a fossil fuel is renewable, though. Then we'll cut that out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so next would be benefits. So, obviously, there's benefits and there's cons, pros, cons on both sides. But one good benefit would be the idea that while gas-powered cars produce nitrogen oxide, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide, that's a lot of air pollution. And that's one main thing that people have wrong with a lot of gasoline and diesel-powered cars. They always jump to the whole idea of it's having a lot of pollution and it's hurting the environment. You see it in cities. There's a lot of smog. They use it. But if you're still worried about that and pollution, you can just get a gas-powered engine with your vehicle and that usually helps a lot with powering the vehicle in a less pollution sort of way and it has better mileage and lower emissions so although it has some emission out of the exhaust and you see some air pollution depending on the car or exhaust such as that and the fuel gasoline itself will usually get you a lot better mileage on any vehicle most of the time and it just has less emissions overall than other alternatives and it just has this also benefits of diesel as well as gasoline and benefits of diesel yeah benefits of diesel they can overcome disadvantages of earlier models and higher noise and maintenance costs so basically what that means is some of the issues that gasoline has or some of the issues that engines have had in the past diesel with its petroleum fractions and mixtures into the way its engine is worked. That sort of fuel can help overcome a lot of those disadvantages that you see. And they're rugged and more reliable. So usually you see them in a lot of vehicles, such as I mentioned earlier. A lot more vehicles that are high power, usually big trucks, 
jeeps, off-road vehicles, or just vehicles such as semis and such that need to haul a lot of weight to a location far away. And yeah, there's just quite a lot of benefits, but there's also cons to that. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Risks. Yeah. That's we pretty much already covered the risks. Most of the risks are pollution. You that's obvious why Chris went to detail with that one. Okay. Then we got the risk of running out. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but like I said earlier, fossil fuels do not like are not combusted easily, okay? They take a long time to be made in the ground. Um, the only thing is... <laughs> okay, the only thing is with that is we are producing it fast, like really fast, gallons at a time, or multiple thousands, thousands of gallons at a time, not multiple thousands, but it's whatever. And the, another risk is prices. Prices can shoot up at any time. They are not set prices. They can, well, as we've seen in Indiana, they go from what a dollar. They went all the way down to a dollar fifty, and I think yesterday we're back up at two twenty-five. It's not reliable. The prices aren't at least. It could shoot up to four dollars. Who knows? It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah, did. We do. A plus. A plus material. Okay. <clears throat> So future use. <laughs> so future use, obviously when people lean towards the whole idea that gasoline pollutes a lot and there's a lot of pollution involved, people usually say we need to go towards eco-friendly, ecosystem friendly stuff. Like you need to go green, you need to go better, more healthy for the environment. Well, on the other side of that, gasoline is still can still be used for a lot of things in our future that can be very difficult to accomplish without it. So with gas, there's infrastructure, which basically there's a lot of pipelines. We've heard about it in the past. There's pipelines that we've wanted to have in America from Canada and such down. It's just you can get a lot of oil around a lot faster. So when the availability of oil is kind of low, when you have the infrastructure of a lot of pipelines, other countries have already done it. When you have a lot of these pipelines, you can gain access to a lot more oil a lot faster, which can be used to accomplish a lot of other things. So Gas is also used to convert water to other energies and other things too, like not just water. But you can convert a lot of things to other various forms of energies with gas. Like gas is the main key that can help convert a lot of things. And an example of that would be hydrogen. Actually, you can use a catalyst. Hopefully you all know what that means. We learned that. It basically means it speeds up a chemical reaction a lot faster. A catalyst will increase the speed of how fast that will accomplish and a catalyst will convert gas into hydrogen a lot quickly like a lot quicker it will go very fast and you can get gas into hydrogen a lot sooner than you could if you didn't use gas like if you just tried to straight up get hydrogen it'd be a lot more complicated and take up a lot more time it's a lot faster and a lot better to do that with gasoline so when you try to eliminate gasoline from the picture in the future, you notice there's a lot of things that can be bad about it. Like not just gasoline, but diesel. Because you get diesel out of a lot of gasoline mixtures. Basically, when you cut all that out of the picture, it's not really the best idea. Because there's still a lot of future uses that gasoline can have. Yeah. <laughs>